You are listening to Proof Text, a Glossa House podcast exploring the scripture and all things related to it. New episodes are released daily. For more information, check out glossahouse.com and subscribe to our channels on Spotify and YouTube. Welcome and enjoy. Hello and welcome to Proof Text. I am Michael Halcom and this is an episode of three things where I share with y'all three things that I'm thinking about. Today's three things orbit around actually one thing, which is the upcoming eclipse. Now, maybe you're watching this and it's already passed where you're at, or it's about to happen. Uh, either way, I want to share with you three things I'm thinking about. Now, just a few weeks ago, I did a longer form episode on this showing some of the fallacies made by those who were acting as though this has some significance for Christians. It's usually sort of the rapture crazies that do this. Um, but uh, yeah. I want to just share with you three thoughts because as I'm recording right now, it's supposed to happen tomorrow. So here's thought number one. Um, if you were to look at a site like astronomy.com or any legitimate uh, website dealing with um, or even book dealing with astronomy, what you're going to realize, and I'm going to show astronomy.com up here on the uh, screen, what you realize is that uh, on average, there are 2.38 solar eclipses of one kind or another each year and in fact listen to this there must be at least two per year but there can't be more than five and more than 72 percent of all years have just two solar eclipses and only 0.5 percent have five so you get that every year there has to be at least two solar eclipses so the question becomes why is it you know one when these are happening in other parts of the world, American Christians aren't going crazy and raving about them. And two, the flip side of that, why is it that when these happen in or near around America, people seem to lose their minds about it and make up all kinds of crazy theories? Those are worth thinking about. Because um, solar eclipses happen at least twice every year. And, um, you know, we, we need to account for that. So um, it's, a, it's a common astronomical phenomenon, right? So we don't need to go making much of it. Um, the second thing that, uh, the second point I want to make then, or the second thing that I'm thinking about um, is uh, that the solar eclipses happen, you know, I just said they happen, um, you know, very frequently. Um, by the way, there are the sec part of the second thing. There are several types of eclipses, right? There's a total eclipse and uh, annular eclipse and a partial eclipse. Um, and uh, these these uh, eclipses, uh, like the one we're about to have, you know, they happen. Uh, you know, like I said, twice a year. And so, if um, if they're happening that often then all right here, here's the here's a related point i just lost my thought sorry about that all right so the the eclipse is getting ready to happen a full eclipse over a large portion of america to the united states of america but uh where i live we're only going to get a partial eclipse so I live in hawaii right um but over parts of america um, they're going to get a full eclipse. All right, so for the people who are yelling about this being something theologically or religiously or biblically significant, um, you know, they're mostly living in that sort of uh, part where they're going to have the full eclipse. Does the fact that it becomes a partial eclipse only mean it's partially true in my context? Right? <laughs> so um, this is just, you know, highlighting sort of a logical fallacy here. So the first thing um, is the regularity with which these happen twice a year, um, sometimes up to five times a year. The second is, um, you know, uh, uh, if if it's happening fully in one place and only partially in another, does that mean the so-called religious significance attached to it's only partially true and where it happens partially? Um, and then the third thing I just want to think about um, and speak about is just that all these claims are just utter nonsense, just utter nonsense. And um, 
you know, I'm going to urge you not to take them seriously. God himself has not said anything about the fact that the, this was going to happen. And we don't need to go trying to make things up in scripture to try to fit a certain narrative. It's just silly. Stop it. Stop it. Um, it's a cool astronomical phenomena, and we should be praising God for that. Wow, that's really cool, God, what you created. Not ignoring that to the expense of wacko theories. All right, so those are the three things that I'm thinking about with regard to the eclipse. I'm not going to ramble on about it. Uh, if you want to hear longer thoughts and some uh, logical stuff going on, then, um, yeah, uh, you can watch the longer video, which you may see here. And you can maybe find a link in the description. All right, my friends, I'm going to stop there and say I hope that helps. Interested in growing your ancient language skills but not sure where to start? Glow's House can help. From illustrated readers and short stories to lexicons and grammars, Glow's House offers a variety of resources for beginning, intermediate, and experienced ancient language learners. Head to glowsahouse.com today. Glow's House, language resources for the global community.